What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. I'm gonna be doing several things in this video, mainly testing this system right here, a PC I built in collaboration with Micro Center, who is sponsoring this video and also sponsoring the giveaway of that system. So find information for entering that in the description down below. But if you watched the video where I assembled this system, then you probably remember that I actually installed the wrong graphics card, or I had just installed an RTX 3080 Founders Edition, which is a very good graphics card, but not the one that was supposed to go in there. So I also need to find out today if this bad boy Boy is gonna fit. Excellent! So that is the Gigabyte Aorus RTX 3080 Master, and it is absolutely one of the most massive graphics cards that I have ever laid hands on, especially considering there's only one GPU inside. They don't really do dual GPU graphics cards anymore, but in order to test the Aorus Master though, and give it a run for its money, I'm going to compare it to the performance of the RTX 3080 Founders Edition, which I've already been running some tests on installed in the system as you see it right here. But before I even did any of that, I had to get the system up and running, and I yet again had a situation where I installed a 5000 series CPU in a 500 series motherboard, an AM4 motherboard, and I discovered that the BIOS that was pre-installed was an older version that did not recognize the uh, 5000 series CPUs. Fortunately, uh, the motherboards I've worked with so far do have BIOS flashback features. Gigabytes is called QFlash Plus, and this particular motherboard has a button to enable it that's physically on the motherboard itself, so you have to open the case in order to access it. However, once I downloaded the updated BIOS, dropped it onto a USB flash drive, renamed it gigabyte.bin, went and booted up the system with that button. It blinked for a while, and then the system shut down, and then upon restart, I was greeted with a BIOS updating screen. I had to wait a little bit longer, but uh, fortunately, the BIOS update worked, and after that, I just had to figure out the RGB LEDs. If you're giving a lot of thought to RGB LEDs in a system, then you might want to consider making very sure that you only need to install one type of RGB LED software. I couldn't do that with this build, but I was able to get away with installing just two. One is the NZXT CAM software, which is controlling this unit here on the NZXT Kraken uh, AIO, which is uh, actually pretty useful if you do like I have it now, where you can directly see the CPU and GPU usage. I'm sorry, CPU and GPU temperature. You can do a bunch of stuff with that, including just dropping in your own animation if you want, but for right now, now I'm just using it for the practical purpose of monitoring GPU and CPU temperature. We also have RGB LEDs, there's a strip across the top, and there's a strip behind the vertical piece there for uh, cable management. And as you can see, I've just set everything to purple, because I'm also using the Gigabyte uh, RGB Fusion software to control the RGB LEDs on the motherboard, which there's an accent here, and then there's a bit of underlighting. And then we also have our G-Skill RGB memory. It is difficult to coordinate all that stuff together using two separate pieces of software. If I wanted a more complex uh, colored light set up, I'd probably have to work pretty hard at it. Uh, as it is, the RGB Fusion software from Gigabyte is absolutely not the greatest. In fact, just when I restarted it right now, it should be showing the memory as well as the motherboard, but the memory has now disappeared. It would probably reappear again if I restarted. The NZXT CAM software, I, I think, is a little bit better, at least in, in terms of UI and everything. It also has a bunch of stuff integrated, like looking at system specs, and you can have specific settings for games. You can even use it for overclocking and stuff like that, although I used MSI Afterburner. But here on lighting, I can modify the color of the uh, strips that are plugged in, and then the LCD display on the uh, Kraken Z7, Z, Z3. Z, I think that's a Z73, Z63, I'm sorry. But like I said, you can do an animated GIF or the dual infographic or CPU or liquid temperature, or GPU temperature or load and stuff like that. So it's useful. But like I said, coordinating the two softwares together, you're either gonna want probably the RGB vomit, uh, just cycling through everything, which is okay, or just picking a static color. And since there's so much NZXT in this build, I went with NZXT purple. So like I said, I've been running some tests on this system just to get a basis for comparison. I'm using my notebook yet again. This is a very efficient means of showing you guys the deal. But as you can see, I ran it at stock, at least the Founders Edition 3080 at stock, and then we're also gonna run overclocked. So I'll try to do stock and overclocked for the Aorus Master as well. Quick CPU test for the 5800X with Cinebench scored 626 and 5905 for single and multi-threaded, which is right where it should be. I also ran 3 Mark Time Spy Extreme for a comparative score. I have Doom Eternal, my typical benchmark run at 1080 and 4K showing the average and 1% low frame rates. And then my comparative test is some practical Doom Eternal gameplay after 10 minutes showing the GPU average and peak temperature, the CPU average and peak temperature, the max fan speed and RPM that it got up to, and then the max and average frequency for the GPU as well. And then I'm also going to be comparing the noise tests. I overclocked the Founders Edition by pushing the power limit to 115, the core clock to plus 75, the memory clock to plus 875, and fixing the fan speed at 70%. That did result in some increased performance, as you can hopefully see right here, but uh, I think more importantly, let's see if I can actually fit the other graphics card in this build, because we might be a little short on space, especially with the AIO where it is, and I might 
need to flip the AIO and put the tubes on the top because I'm not sure if I'll have enough room to pass them by, but we'll see. So I did another honorary unboxing of this graphics card. I've actually already unboxed it during our charity live stream, but I did it again and it's still huge. It's still substantial. It still just, just boggles the mind how big this card actually is. And it wasn't until I actually pulled the RTX 3080 out of the system and put them side by side where I was like, uh, that's a beefy, that's a chonky card. That's chonky. I, I'm going to name you Big Chunk, Horus Master RTX 3080, because uh, I think that's an appropriate title. Just look at the height difference. Look at... <laughs> Look at the extra like 1.7 slots or so that this card's gonna take up versus the two slot version of the RTX 3080 Founders Edition. It's got, I don't know how many copper heat pipes in there and it's got just big fat stacks of uh, aluminum fins everywhere for heat dissipation. So I feel like they just tried to take up as much volume as they possibly could with the cooler for this card. It has triple fans that all appear to be slightly different sizes. And I think this has the gigabyte thing where the center fan spins in the opposite direction as these two outer fans. The shroud is made of just a thick plastic, um, but it does have these sort of shiny accent areas just all over, which are really easy to get fingerprints on, but also have plastic coverings on all of them. And I almost forgot, oh, you, you gotta pull the ones off the fan hubs too, because that gives you at least, that lets the fans spin like way higher RPMs, and then you get more, you get more frames, more FPS that way. Okay. Now the Founders Edition already measures in at about 11 and a quarter inches for the shroud there. And if I try to do the same measurement with this card, um, my, my ruler isn't long enough. It's too long for my ruler. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it like 12 and a half about. That, looks, that sounds about right. I have to imagine there will be some RGB effects on this once we get it fired up. It does have a pass-through area on the heat shroud as well, so the PCB actually cuts in a little bit right here, still maintaining just dual 8-pin power connectors, which is honestly all you should really need for an RTX 3080 anyway. But you can see there the PCB kind of cuts in a little bit, but then it also just ends right here, and that leaves, again, more gap open for pass-through of uh, cooling air over the heat fins. It does look like we have a dual BIOS switch here. Usually that will ship in sort of a stock and a silent mode or sometimes a stock and an OC mode, but having dual BIOSes with a physical switch is a, f a feature I would look for on a higher end card. And you do get bonus video outs with this card in the form of three HDMI 2.1s, which is more than the one HDMI 2.1 that the Founders Edition has. And with either card, you get three display ports. And installation is complete. Wow, I'm... I, like, I don't often expect things to go more easily than I am expecting them to go, if that makes sense, but I was really, I was thinking this was going to be a pain in the butt. I had lined it up earlier, and I was like, I think there's barely enough room if I angle it in there to get it in there, but I really didn't think the tubing was going to work out. However, I was able to just kind of push it back and tuck it back there, and there's enough slack, like plenty, and room for them to pass through, so I... I think that's a great solution for it right there. The GPU itself is taking up so much space in here, but it does still have a little bit of a gap there between the radiator and the end of the cooler. Uh, it does have a little animation window right there that right now I think it's just playing some defaults like egg cracking, egg shell cracking, but it, it never actually ha hatches. I don't know what's in there. I did have to tuck some of the peg connectors back here, but uh, just to show you the RGB, there's a bit of an accent right there. There's the Oris logo on the back plate, the shiny part there that also lights up. And then if you did vertical mount this, although I'm not sure what cases it would fit vertically mounted in being a four slot fan, there are some accents sort of around the shroud itself and around the shroud cooling fans, as you can see right there. And you can probably also tell the fans aren't spinning just like uh, with most GPUs these days. If the GPU is not warm enough, the fans do not spin. All right, I got the side panel back on as well. So the system is set up the way it should be for some further testing of this graphics card and specifically for this Gigabyte Aorus Master model. I just wanted to double check the overclock it has since it ships with an out-of-the-box overclock. So the boost we're looking at here is 1845 and that is up from the Founders Edition's boost at stock, which is 1710, a decent bump. Memory still appears to be the same. I did do a clean install of the uh, GPU drivers just to make sure everything is running properly and I'm happy to say that upon restart RGB Fusion 2.0 has recognized not just the memory but also the GPU. So although it is somewhat limited in the, in the uh, number of uh, effects and stuff you can do static and like the uh, color cycle are okay I think. And you can pick any color you want for static so as soon as it uh, loaded up and recognized it also set all the LEDs on the graphics card to purple too. Cool. So I'm going to run those same tests again at stock and then I'll see what I can do with overclocking this card and get the results for that as well. 
I'll be right back. All right, guys, I've done some more testing now. Uh, thankfully, after the GPU is installed, I was able to test at stock and I did a little bit of overclocking as well. So let's start by sharing some results and let's start with uh, the noise. The noise tests were run with my shotgun mic set at a fixed distance from the system and I am just uh, recording the sound after about 10 minutes of solid gameplay playing Doom Eternal. So first off, here's the Founders Edition running at stock. And now here's the Founders Edition with my overclock where I set the fan speed to a fixed 70%, which keeps the temperatures down, which results in cl higher clock speeds, but it does result in a noisier overall experience. I could have set the fan percentage higher and then it would be even louder. I found 70% to be an acceptable noise level while still keeping temperatures down enough to result in an overclock. Next, here's the system sound with the Aorus Master installed running at stock. And interestingly, the fan speed on the Aorus Master at stock got up to 84%, which seemed a little bit high to me. That said, it wasn't all that loud at that speed. For my overclock again, I set a fixed fan speed that I wanted to be higher than the stock fan speed of 84%, so I ended up at 92% fan speed, and here's what that sounded like. So honestly, both of these cards are very good at cooling, and I think that's why when it comes to the noise level generated, uh, they're not too far off from each other, at least as far as what I could tell. That said, I think at stock, the Aorus Master is running just a little bit quieter, and it, it should, because it has a much, much larger cooler on it and three cooling fans. Here are my test results, and I'm sorry uh, if you guys have difficulty reading my writing, but uh, on the left side are stock results. This is the Founders Edition, and this is the Aorus Master. On the right side is overclocked with the Founders Edition here and the Aorus Master here. So with the out-of-the-box overclock, the Aorus Master increased the GPU score in 3D Mark times by Extreme from 88.22 to 9058. And you can see similar improvements in the Doom Eternal scores at 1080 going from 388 on average to 398 on average. The 1% lows did suffer just a little bit there, but uh, it wasn't noticeable by any stretch. And at 4K we went from 163.5 up to 167.5 tried to highlight the important key things here, uh, such as GPU temperature, of course, where we were pretty much at 75 degrees on average and peak with the Founders Edition. The Aorus Master brought that down by uh, 6 or 7 degrees, hitting uh, 68 on average, 69 peak. Although CPU temps did go up just a little bit, and I think that's a result of a little bit more uh, heat being dumped into the case due to the higher frequencies on the Aorus card. At 84% fan speed at stock, the fan RPMs were up to 2455, but again, it still stayed pretty quiet, and then max frequency it hit was 1980, and the average frequency was 1848, which is again is a nice bump up over the average frequency of the Founders Edition card at 1775. When overclocking, the Aorus Master is still stuck at a 100 power limit, so I believe that must mean that the power is maxed on it. It was drawing about 350 watts max, but it would be nice to see this expanded if there's a possibility of an updated VBIOS in the future. Other than that, I dialed in pretty much the same overclock with the core clock at plus 75 and the memory clock at plus 875, and then fixed to the fan speed at 92%. So the Founders Edition went from 8822 to 9211, uh, which did beat the Aorus Master at stock at 9058, but the Aorus Master overclock had the top score of 9324. Likewise, we saw improvements in my Doom Eternal test run going from 389.1 uh, with the Founders Edition overclocked up to 414.6 and from 170.5 at 4K to 175.3. Some nice improvements in 1% lows as well, but uh, the real story I think is actually here in my longer test. So this is a 10 minute game play test just actually playing the game and here the average frequency is going to be the most important number and the average frequency for the founders edition was 1958 whereas we were at 1911 with the Aorus master which is less so even though in these tests and in doom eternal uh, i got a higher uh, frame rate overall these are short tests these are one minute runs whereas in the longer test i do believe this is because we're dealing with a smaller case and we'd probably be looking at a different scenario if we were testing this on an open test bed or just something with a lot more air Flow direct, directed at it to make better use of that massive air cooler. But the fact is, in terms of average frame rates, uh, the Founders Edition was actually a little bit better. So the upshot here is that the Aorus Master is a card that uh, runs a little bit faster
faster out of the box and definitely has a very effective cooler built into it. However, in reality, we have to take reality into consideration, like what case it's installed in and the thermal environment that it's going to be subjected to. Also, it's a pretty reasonable guess that uh, Nvidia is still cherry picking the uh, best binned GPUs for the RTX 3080s for their Founders Edition cards. However, that is not to say that the Aorus Master is a bag card by any stretch, but it simply means that when overclocked, we're dealing with a silicon quality difference a little bit more than the overall build quality and the cooler quality. And I'm actually wishing I had a little bit more time with this card to test in an open testbed environment because I've dedicated all my testing time to testing this setup right here. That said, we're really looking at marginal differences between the Founders Edition and this card in terms of actual real world performance. So I think for whoever happens to win this system, uh, hopefully they will not begrudge me in keeping my Founders Edition card. The winner will get the Aorus Master, which is absolutely a beastly card. And I feel like I've kind of barely scratched the surface of what it's capable of in the quick tests that I ran today. So I need to wrap up this video, but before I do, a few closing words. First, a huge thank you once again to Micro Center for sponsoring uh, these past couple videos on this build, sponsoring this build and allowing me to offer it as a giveaway to you guys. If you guys would like to enter the giveaway, it is still open for a couple more days and the link to that should be in the video's description. And also a huge thank you to everyone who came and donated during our charity live stream on Saturday, as well as the continued donations that have been coming in after the fact because the Extra Life charity event is technically open through the end of the year. We started with a goal of 15,000, bumped it to 30K, then 40K, and now we're uh, just, just a hair away from 50K. So if you guys can help us get over that mark, that would be awesome. But remember, you do not need to donate in order to enter to win the PC. So again, links to everything that's important like that is down in the video's description. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments if you think that the Aorus Master was an upgrade or a downgrade or a side grade compared to the RTX 3080. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out. And of course, uh, don't forget to check the link to my store at pulsehardware.net where you can buy shirts and mugs and pint glasses and all other types of awesome merchandise to help merchandise your life with Pulse Hardware merch. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.